We spoke to a number of thought leaders who were present at the conference and also people who were speakers presenting. And we found out what were the trends and innovations in UK dentistry at the moment. And we're proud to present this to you in the special broadcast. Hi, I'm Marita Critzio and I'm at the NEC at the Dentistry Show in Birmingham and I'm speaking with Sarah Bradbury who is the Marketing, Communications and Brand Manager at DenPlan. Sarah, thank you for coming to speak to me. Okay. Um, I'd, like to I'd like you to tell me a bit about the DenPlan practice marketing support that you offer to members. Well, we have uh, a few ways that we can help members with uh, marketing locally. Uh, we have a, a service of a bespoke marketing consultant. You can go into the practice mm. and actually look at what the practice wants to achieve locally. So whether they're looking to promote a new product to their current members or provide them with a newsletter or something to keep them updated on facts, whether they actually want to attract a new patient to the practice. Mm. It's all included as part of their membership. So we will create a bespoke plan that's just right for them. On top of that, we support them with the materials, and we've got a great new system coming up this mm. year. I can't tell you too much about it, okay. but it will really help them do their own branding with their own marketing collateral mm. in a very cost-effective and efficient way. So, Sarah, with all this um, practice marketing that DenPlan does, um, helping practices to promote their brand, how does the DenPlan brand fit into all of this? Well, we um, can give practices as much or as little of the Denplan brand as they want really. Okay. What we find is some practices want the whole practice Denplan branded, others want to keep their brand mm -hmm. and actually use the Denplan brand as a support. We, we really come in as a, a sort of silent business partner to actually offer them more support for uh, patient recruitment, patient retention. So really if a patient sees the Denplan brand supporting the practices brand, it just gives them a little bit more trust and a bit more bit more loyalty mm. towards the brand. We, we know that a lot of our patients, 80% in fact, who were surveyed recently said they would recommend Demplan to friends and family. Okay. So, so actually by having that, that brand support behind their own brand, it can actually encourage patients in practice as well as that loyalty. And how does Demplan support its members when it comes to regulatory issues in dentistry? Well, we, I think we accept that they're always going to happen, whether it's HTMO 105, whether it's revalidation, whether it is CQC registration. So what we try and do is actually support members and have minimal impact on their practice and their practice teams. So we create bespoke templates that they can fill in, practice protocols. Our Chief Dental Officer, Roger Matthews, and, and his team just work really hard to, to look at ways of, of producing things that the practice team can use and supporting them through it. So it's got absolute minimum impact on, on treating their, their patients. And what does Denplan do nationally to promote its own brand? We um, take up opportunities wherever we can really to, to create that brand awareness, but we try and do a bit more with it as well. We try and actually help practices by driving patients into, into the practice by using our brand. Okay. So we will do um, the odd bit of advertising, but generally it's more on a sponsorship or mm. PR point of view. So we are very exciting for us the first time sponsoring the perimeter fences around the 2020 cricket this year. Okay. But the, like I said, the main part is the PR part. Yes. And we do we support national consumer campaigns such as the Mouth Cancer Action Month. Mm. We provide PR toolkits for practices, how to make the most of that locally. Okay. Unless you will remember last summer, 20th Century Fox film Tooth Fairy. Mm -hmm. And we supported the film and actually provided practices with goodie bags. So we could drive patients into the practice and pick up giddy bags with things like the Philips Sonic Air brush for kids, Colgate toothpaste, and we had a great redemption on that, about 25% of people actually redeeming the vouchers and, and picking those kits up in practice, and 85% of those patients weren't actually Denplan patients. So we really demonstrated we could drive patients into, mm. into, into practices. So we're planning a lot more this year. And Sarah, what events have Denplan got planned for this year? We've got a really exciting series of minimal intervention events mm. that we're supported by Oral-B, GC, Velopex and Dental Update. Mm. And this is a really, really good way of dentists to look at how they can actually implement a minimal invasive approach in practice with Abby Banerjee and Lewis McKenzie talking. So that's a really exciting series. And we've already got loads of people signed up for it, members and non-members. We've got Raj Vatan talking um, at a series of roadshows about the changes in the NHS. 
plus this is the year, our 25th year for our national and our national conference will be celebrating that mm. in September. Okay. So lots on. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. You're I'm welcome. Marita Kutzinger, and if you'd like to find out more about Denplan and all its activities that Sarah just told us about, please visit their website. I'm speaking with Dr. James Gulnick, um, who is here with us, and he is part of the Aesthetic Dentist Program. James, can you tell us a little bit about the program that's been put together for Aesthetic Dentists at the show? So we've got quite an exciting program, actually. It's two days, and the general premise is, of, uh, is minimal invasive dentistry. We started off with Anoop Mania. We were talking about six-month smiles and how a general practitioner can actually change somebody's smile and get the teeth into a better position without just drilling them away. The traditional way was, I want my smile now, don't really care what's happening. And now people are realizing that actually that's not the best way. It's not conservative, it causes more problems down the line. And actually they really want their natural smile, but just enhanced. So we've been talking about that. We have David Hornbrook and he's been talking about the new ceramics and how you don't have to prep, take so much off the teeth. So uh, with the new sort of uh, Empress and things like that, it's been much, much better for that. So he's been going through that. And then we went on to Michael Wise, and we were talking about sort of failures and, and what materials last the longest. And again, it's natural enamel. It's why take away something that's healthy. So it's been really fascinating about how the shift has been changing slowly um, through that. We're then passing on to aesthetic implants, and again, if a tooth has failed, it's when is the best time to take it out, and then if we have to take it out, how to actually make it look as healthy and as natural as possible. So Tidu Manku has been going through that as well. So it's been really fascinating, actually. And you've also presented as part of the program, or you are presenting. Can you tell us a bit about what your, your program was about? So my program is actually in about an hour. So uh, it's called Why Drill Enamel. So again, why do you have to take away natural teeth? So mine is more of a team approach. So actually when somebody comes in, first of all, it's actually how to change their smile without actually taking away some of their teeth. So it's using orthodontics. And now with a lot of quicker orthodontics, we can make some big changes. But also it's working with the whole team, the hygiene team, and getting everyone embracing in. And again, maybe just some simple whitening and bonding as well so that's really what it's about is people thinking a little bit more about what the long-term sort of prognosis of whatever it is and actually again maintenance as well there's a lot of things that we can catch things early we can use materials that are repairable and which will actually last a lot longer and it's cheaper for the patients we often don't need to use any injections no drilling it's a win-win for everybody really and in terms of the people who've been attending these aesthetic dentistry sessions, what are some of the questions and what are the general t trends that are coming up? What, what do aesthetic dentists want to know? I think a lot of them want to know is how to get the training in these things because a lot of the time when they finish as an undergraduate they don't really get any aesthetic training and, and they go on various different courses. I think it's where to get the training. Uh, David Bloom came along and talks about photography and again that's really the entry level. When you're starting to try and improve smiles or improve anything really, it's starting to take photography and then putting it on the screen and asking the patients what would you like to change rather than going on for 10 minutes about one thing you'd like to change, they may not even notice it. So it's the photography, so that's the big thing. And then a lot of these courses like Six Month Smile, Invisalign, Inman Align and things like that, is actually getting where to get the training and, and which order to do it in because they often see some of this sexy dentistry that goes up there, but actually they don't realize that there is a process to get through to that place. And sometimes sexy dentistry may be just replacing an old amalgam with a white filling and that's what the patient wants. So. Okay, and so you're a dentist, but you're also an entrepreneur, and you've recently written a book yep. called Brush. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? It's just launched um, to the market. What made you decide to write the book in the first place? So I've been, uh, the last couple of years since being president of the BACD, I've been doing a lot more teaching, and we get the same sort of questions asked. They're saying, well, how do you motivate a team? Uh, when can you tell if a team member is about to jump ship? Uh, what sort of uh, trends are there in the marketplace? So what are patients asking for? And actually how to find out about that? So the more I sort of write articles, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put it all into a book and give it all the best bits, and that's what I brought it out. And then I thought, well, once I've done the book, how can I further help the dental profession? I thought, well, it's not just for the dentist. This is for the hygienist, it's for nurses, it's for anybody, really. I've had a, a doctor colleague who actually read it and thought, this is brilliant, they should have done this for medicine. So I've been doing that, and then we thought, well, actually, we don't really need the money because we make more money doing clinical dentistry than writing books, so we're going to find out. So I thought we'd just do the money for Dentaid, so that all the money is going to Dentaid and we're hoping to build two clinics in Cambodia. So, guys, with your help, jamesgoulink.com. It's $12.99. All the profits going to Dentaid. So please read it, enjoy it, and give me feedback for the next one. Thank you very much, James.
I'm speaking with Dr. Tidu Manku, who is part of the Aesthetic Dentistry Program, and he's about to present later today. Dr. Manku, thank you for coming to speak to me. Can you tell our viewers a bit about what you're going to be speaking about in your, in your presentation? Sure. Well, I'll be speaking about uh, the current trends in implant dentistry and, and thinking about you know, how we're going to uh, best manage the aesthetic zone for patients. So, in other words, how we can restore missing teeth or failing teeth in the aesthetic zone with uh, dental implants and get the optimum result. So we have something that's going to last, that's going to look perfect, and it's going to stand the test of time and, and work well for the patient. Okay. So you've worked with implant dentistry for many years now. What, what would you say are the trends that are taking place in this particular area of dentistry and what excites you about it? Well, I think what excites me about it is the fact that, you know, you can do some, uh, you can really put people back together again who've lost their teeth, uh, people who've in the past, you know, certainly when I qualified in dentistry 30 years ago, it was uh, a patients that we treat today would have no options but dentures and, uh, and the quality of life that we can uh, provide people with dental implant solutions is, uh, is tremendous. I think... Uh, in terms of progress, what we see today is a really uh, an advances in the way that dental implants can be utilized in different situations. Uh, I think a better understanding of the biology so that we are able to create results which are more predictable. And, uh, and with the technologies available, the treatments have become a little bit easier to manage, and particularly with CAD CAM and, uh, and uh, the combination of uh, CAD CAM and CT scanning, we've got, you know, more sophisticated treatment planning um, systems. Uh, we have uh, more materials that are pliable on uh, the dental implants solutions. And uh, I think you know what's exciting is the fact that we can really strive to push the boundaries and, and try and get you know the best possible results for our patients. Thank you very much for speaking to me, Dr. Manku. I'm speaking with Dr. David Bloom. David, thank you so much for coming to speak to me. Can you please tell us, you've been presenting as part of the Aesthetic Dentist Program, what you presented about at the show? Uh, today I was talking about uh, photography um, and its importance for diagnosis and treatment planning and particularly for patient communication. Okay. And what were some of the questions that came up from the crowd and people who were watching you? Uh, some of the questions were about ca camera settings and lens settings. I'm trying to explain that the digital photography is actually quite straightforward. It's not as complicated as the camera looks. And how easy is it to do to be really good at clinical photography? Uh, it's it's very easy. In fact, uh, if I say my my staff today, I wouldn't want to be saying that they they are. Uh, any less capable, but you can train staff members to do it, and actually, staff members take most of the photography in our practice. So uh, very straightforward. Right. Okay. And in terms of using best using your clinical photography, um, and what you do with the before and after and progress pictures, how do you suggest to dentists that they store this information and then use it for case presentation later on? Do you have any tips? Yeah. The, the, you could you can make some files and you can pre have a folders that have subfolders. So if you copy those. It's very easy to have all your subfolders made. And then the uses are, are endless. Patient communication, websites, um, lab communication, um, really a, a central part of our, of our equipment these days. And I know um, with the BACD, which of course you're a member of, um, if you want to become a member and sort of use the, the track within the BACD, you have to present cases. And I suppose the, the clinical photography is a big part of that as well. Absolutely, accreditation is what you're talking about. Okay. And accreditation is, uh, is all about, it's a journey, it's, it's not a destination, but the photography helps you uh, to see the work you're doing and to elevate your clinical skills. Um, and the, the digital photography is an essential part of that. But again, it's not complicated, it's not difficult. The lenses look complicated, but once you get a hold of the camera, it's really a question of point and shoot. Fantastic. David, thank you so much for your time. You I'm Marita Kretzinger.